Okay, we're going to talk about permutations that have mirror images. And I think uh, <coughs> the things you need to know before we start on the word problems is when it says a charm bracelet with a clasp, that means it can be like it's this one down here, this this part right here. That means it can be open, so it's linear. So that's going to be in factorial. Without a class, that means you can't open it, so that's circular. So that's going to be n minus 1 factorial. And we already talked about the differences between linear and circular permutations. Um, the thing with the mirror images is, though, if we look at number 1, and it's really hard for me to do, this is number 2. It's really hard for me to show you an example Um without physically showing it to you of number two. So we'll just talk about the linear ones. Um, when they talk about permutations, they're actually talking about you arranging charms on a bracelet. How many ways can you arrange them to get the different order? So that means how much work do you have to do to get the arrangement? So when you have a mirror image, like you can take this charm bracelet and turn it from what I did here. I have A and B. So when I arranged this A charm bracelet with the triangle, circle, heart, and square, when I did the work, all I have to do, say this is my left and this is my right, all I have to do is switch the left and the right, and I already have another arrangement. So when you're counting your arrangements, you're also counting this one, but we already did the work to get this one. Oh, this is, uh, this would be left. All right, you're already doing the work to get this one when you did it here. So what you're gonna do is divide this by two because you don't wanna count this twice. So I'm gonna say it again. When you arrange the charm for A, you already did the work to get B. So when you're doing just the linear arrangement of N factorial, you're also counting B, which is a duplicate because this is a mirror image of one another. You don't have to work twice to get this. You only had to work once to get both of these. So that's what it means to have a mirror image. And the same thing's gonna happen with the key. It's really the arrangements you're making. How much work do you have to do to get that arrangement? And the same applies for the circular that doesn't have a class without a class. So I hope that makes sense. You have to, it's one of those things you have to think about. All right, so let's do how many ways can four charms be arranged on a bracelet that has a class? So normally, with a class, that means it's linear, that would be four factorial, which four factorial is four times three times two times one, which would be 24. However, since it's a mirror image, we have to divide this by two. And divide that by two, there's only 12 ways we have to arrange the charms to get the 24 different arrangements because you only have to work once because you can flip that charm bracelet to left to right or look at it in a mirror. So when you arrange it one way and you look in the mirror, you already have the other arrangement. Now, um, how many ways can charms be arranged on a bracelet that has a class? Well, that's just gonna be four. Well, this is the same, these two go together. So that's four charms. Okay, so this would be four minus one factorial over two. So the answer would be, um, da, da, da. so this is gonna be three factorial over two, which equals um, three times two times one over two, which equals three, okay? So really think about this. Uh, how many ways can six charms be arranged? If there is a class, that means it's linear. That's six factorial over two, and that would be um, six factorial over two would be 360. 
And without a class, that would be 6 minus 1 factorial over 2, which would equal um, 60. Okay? Now, how many ways can three keys be placed on a circular key ring? So, I really should have used the word arranged. So, basically, if you have three keys and you put them on a key ring, all right, how many ways, how many arrangements are you going to get? And if you divide this by 2, that just equals 1. So basically what this is saying is when you put three keys on a ring, they rotate around. So you already have all the arrangements on there. You have all the different orders just by working one time by putting the three keys on there. Because you can flip the keys around. So that would be like the mirror image thing, but it's going in, around in a circle. All right. Um, actually, it's uh, not this three minus one factorial. Sorry about that. Which would be two factorial over two, which equals one. All right. Same thing for four keys. Um, that would be four minus one factorial over two, which is three factorial over two, which would be three. So that would mean there's three ways three times you have to put four keys on a key ring to get all the possible different arrangements. So uh, think about it when you see the word arranged or placed as work. How much work do you have to do to get all the different combinations or permutations? Okay. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is the difference between permutations and combinations. A combination means there's no order involved. And we're just going to look at word problems on the next video and determine if we're going to use um, the combination formula or the permutation formula. That's all, and have a nice day. Thank you.